H.L. Mencken called this the monkey trial. And so somebody had to bring a monkey, uh, a chimpanzee <laughs> here. We are in the circuit courtroom of the Ray County Courthouse in Dayton, Tennessee. In this courtroom in 1925, John Scopes was tried for violating a state law that made it illegal for any teacher that taught any theory that contradicts the biblical account of human creation. That happened right here. Is this the actual book, or just as one of the textbooks? One of the, one of the, I mean, that is the, the correct edition. edition. Uh, I've got another one open to the offending pages. So on this page, um, it says, Doctrine of Evolution, the number of animal species, man's place in nature, instincts, and evolution of man. If you go on page further, you will find part of this book, that talks about the evolution of the races of man, and it speaks about these various races, the African, the American Indian, the Oriental. But then it goes on to say, and finally, the most highly developed race of all, the Caucasians, as represented by the people of Europe and North America. That is blatant racism based upon evolutionary theory and this is the text the American Civil Liberties Union was defending there in the Scopes trial. The fear of God is not the beginning of wisdom. The fear of God is the death of wisdom. Skepticism and doubt lead to study and investigation, and investigation is the beginning of wisdom. While there was a hollow victory for the creationists, the publicity surrounding the event framed them all as cooks. The Scopes trial was technically a legal victory for the creationists, the law that prohibited teaching evolution in Tennessee was upheld as constitutional, but there followed a retreat by the church and even by many evangelicals. And as we look to further cases down the line, we see that creationists have lost most of the time. New York, 1962, the U.S. Supreme Court rules that state officials may not compose an official state prayer. Pennsylvania, 1963, no state law or school board may require that passages from the Bible be read or that the Lord's Prayer be recited in the public schools. Arkansas, 1968, the state's law prohibiting the teaching of evolution in a public school is unconstitutional. Alabama, 1985, statutes authorizing silent and voluntary prayer in public schools violate the First Amendment. Louisiana, 1987, a state law requiring that creation science be taught along with evolution is struck down. Texas, the year 2000, student-led prayer prior to football games is banned. Pennsylvania, 2005, teaching intelligent design as an alternative to evolution is prohibited. Since Dayton, things have just gotten worse. With every attempt by Christians to introduce religion in the classroom shot down by the Supreme Court. Today, we definitely are seeing the flip side, the same battle 180 degrees removed from what was argued in 1925. And whose fault is that? You know, did we as Christians back off and let this happen? Question is, can we recover that? I don't know. I do not know.